Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're talking amenory recovery signs. Before we dive in, please, if you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe. And if you are listening on the podcast, please subscribe, rate the podcast. It's so, so helpful for other women to find the show. And I just love reading the reviews and all that good stuff. So please do do that. Now, this episode is basically the main, the five main signs I see in people recovering. Now, I have a community called the AJ Society where I help women get their period back. Or we all honestly help each other, but we do weekly community calls and I coach them one-on-one in the DMs if they need extra support. So that is just to say that I talk to a lot of women who are recovering and I see a ton, ton, ton of different people's experiences. And all of those are accumulating to be these five signs that I see. So we're just going to dive straight in. The first one is increased hunger. So much like pregnancy, it's what it reminds me of. This is one of those ones that either some people get or some people get the total opposite of. But an increase in hunger is a common one. I experienced it for about a week and a half. Some people get it for two weeks, three weeks, three months, six months, eight months. Everyone's timeline is different. So if you're experiencing extreme hunger and wondering when is this going to stop, it will stop eventually. But this increase in hunger is happening because you have been in a calorie deficit or an energy deficit for so long that it's your body firing up and switching on and being like, oh, we're, we're, we're being fed. She's She's got access to food. She's in an abundance of food. We never get that. We get that so sparingly. So we're going to capitalize. We're going to maximize. We're going to up her metabolism now because we've been down-regulating it for ages. Now we're going to up it. We're going to increase her desire to eat so that she eats more. And we're going to start working on replenishing the energy stores that have been depleted from us. So that's essentially what's happening in your body. That's why you're experiencing that hunger and everyone's hunger is going to wane, come on and wane it differently. But it's a really great sign that your body is moving in the right direction. Now, on the opposite side of that spectrum is improved satiation. So you may experience the extreme hunger and then the improved satiation, or you may experience just straight away improved satiation. And satiation means how full you feel full. You know, when you eat a meal that you're just like pleasantly full from and it keeps you full for a while, maybe some of you don't know what that's like. Or maybe like me, you once thought that was not even possible for you. You're just always going to be ravenously hungry. But you'll find when you enter recovery, you start to feel pleasantly full. You start to feel satiation. And when I have one-on-one clients or HA Society members say like, I can't believe I'm not ravenously hungry anymore. What's happening to me? I know that their body is settling in. It's finding a groove. It's feeling like food is no longer a scarcity and food is available to you when you want it. That's how we know that you're on the right track. And also it's just a sign that you're not hungry anymore. You're giving yourself, your body, the fats and the proteins that it needs to actually feel full. That's how the body works. We're not actually always hungry, shockingly enough. And you'll discover that when you go down the path of recovery. Number three, and a lot of you who know me well will know that this is no surprise, cervical mucus. When you start to experience cervical mucus, appearing in your underwear or when you wipe with the toilet paper, this is a sign that estrogen is rising and generally that you're actually about to ovulate. So a lot of people, warning, see cervical mucus for a prolonged period of time before they actually ovulate. So just because you're seeing it does not mean that ovulation is imminent, but it does mean that your ovaries are trying. So when our brain is suddenly or over time, realizing that we're in a calorie surplus for long enough that I think that we're safe, right? Which is why increased hunger is then then constantly feeling satiated is a sign because then it tells your brain we have enough food, things are looking good. You can start to turn bodily functions that we've been turning off on again. Now 
we can tell the ovaries to start producing estrogen. And when the ovaries start producing estrogen, they produce cervical mucus. And when we produce cervical mucus, and when we produce cervical mucus, sperm that is entering into the cervix can actually survive. And what this is important for is pregnancy. So if you are producing cervical mucus, you're fertile in this moment and sperm can come and it can survive in that cervical mucus for up to five days waiting for ovulation to happen. So first of all, if you don't want to get pregnant, don't have sex when you see cervical mucus. But if you do, do have sex, I guess. And this is a huge, huge sign of progress. If you have had HA for a while, you know it is bone dry down there. So when you start to experience moisture, this is no infection, my friends. This is estrogen rising. Number four, alongside with cervical mucus, is an improved basal body temperature. So nine times out of 10, when I get a new client who's had HA for ages, particularly because they're under eating or they're over exercising, we start to take our basal body temperature first thing in the morning with a basal body thermometer. And we find that their temperature is falling outside of the normal ranges for what a woman's basal body temperature should be. So before ovulation, your temperature should be a minimum of 36.4 degrees Celsius or 97.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And if we're seeing temperatures lower than that, like in the 96 Fahrenheit, the 35 Celsius, I see this a lot. And this is a sign that metabolism is low, potentially thyroid issues. Not always, definitely not always, but potentially. And it's generally just a sign when it's that low that we're a ways away from ovulation. And it gives me an indicator of how what types of changes we need to make nutritionally and supplements and stress-wise and how, and calorie-wise and how long it's going to take us, to be honest. And then when we continue taking the temperature and making the lifestyle changes, when we see your temperature rise into the pre-ovulatory range that it should be in, this is a sign of progress. This is a huge, 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 huge sign of progress. And I think that a lot of people don't want to be tracking all these things they just want to like eat all of the food, rest and wait for this bleed to happen. And they kind of get discouraged because they're not seeing progress. But when you're tracking things like your cervical mucus and your mood and your hunger and your basal body temperature, you're actually able to see all of these small wins and this progress that you're making along the way. So something that I recommend doing, and I have a blog post on that too, um, fertility awareness method for HA is if that's something you're interested in, I will link to it in the show notes. And also inside of the HA Society, I have a full mini course on how to get started tracking cervical mucus and basal body temperature. So if you're interested in that, I have the exact mini course for you. So you just have to join the HA Society. I'll link to that in the show notes or it's thehasociety.com and join up and you can access that mini course right away. Okay, now number five, the last main sign that I see is better mood, libido, spontaneity, and outlook on life in general. So I know that's a bunch all in one, <laughs> but it's true. We start to see women get more relaxed about going out to dinner with friends and just eating whatever and get more spontaneous about the choices that they're making or the things they go out to do, leaving the safety zone of their routine. They're usually in a better mood. They're less pissed with their partner or less agitated about everything and anything. This may sound a little bit weird and wacky, but it's true. I see so many women that are like, huge win. I just went to pizza with friends and I did not care about it. Or this is awesome. My partner was just like, hey, do you want to go out to dinner? And I was like, sure. Even though I had already started preparing a meal a bit earlier, I just put it in the fridge and we just went out to dinner and it didn't stress me out. I think that this is really relatable to a lot of you listening who are still in recovery. So I want you to know that that is a sign if you are experiencing being more relaxed about life and being a bit more go with the flow, that's a huge sign of progress. And I'm going to throw in now that we're on the topic and I, I didn't include this in the signs, but a bonus sign or whatever is going to be, um, you know, improved skin, hair and nails. So for me, I had, when I had HA, I had dry skin, crusty eyes, brittle nails. And when I started to recover, actually the first thing 
that happened really early on was my hair would start to just like be a little bit more alive. It grew a little faster. My skin was less dry. My nails got thicker and stronger. And I had that one really early on. So that is a sign of progress in the right direction. And I want to point out that, you know, it just shows how many other things your body is shutting down, not just your ovaries and your reproductive system and your whole uterus. It's not just shutting that down. It's also shutting down all of the things that keep your body going. And it's also shutting down a bunch of the little things like hair, nails, eye lubrication, all of that stuff. It's a, it's impacting it. So all of those things are also being restored on the way. So you're not just going to start eating a whole bunch and necessarily get your period back the next month or two. You might, but you might not because your body is also trying to distribute the extra energy that you're giving it to other areas of your body. So it's important to remember that, right? It's not just your period. It's also things like if you're like me, your nails and your hair and maybe your bowel movements and maybe your skin. And it's just important to remember those things as well. That progress isn't just in your period. I hope that was helpful, guys. I also have this as a blog post. So I'm going to link to that in the show notes. If you think this would be a helpful episode for anyone that you know, please go share it with them. And come and check us out at the hasociety.com. We have a ton of blogs. We have a seven-day challenge you can do to help commit to recovery. We have a really awesome quiz that just helps you figure out how far might you be from getting your period back based on what you're willing to do. It's called the How Long Might My Period Take to Get Back quiz. And you answer a bunch of lifestyle questions about what you're currently doing for recovery and what your starting point kind of looks like. And we give you an idea of how long it might take you. And then for about a week or two weeks, I send you a few tips about how to get your period back uh, or how to speed up the amount of time it's going to take you based on your answers to the quiz. So go check that out. It's all at the hasociety.com. Peruse, see what you like. And most definitely join us at the HA Society. It's an amazing community. I love all of this women. I'm in there every day talking to them. We meet twice a week minimum to coach together as a community. We all contribute to each other's success and it's just a really great relationship. A bunch of those girls in there are like, they're meeting up in London and making real friends for life. I'm pretty jealous of that, but one day I'll be able to do that with them. I digress. I'm waffling on. Thank you guys so much. Please subscribe. Please rate the podcast. Please like the video and I'll see you guys next time.